Site analysis is usually the first stage of the design process in a studio project and is the foundation from which your design intentions grow. The quality and effort of this phase can absolutely make or break a solid piece of architecture. In this video, I'm going to help you understand the importance of a site analysis and the processes which will help you carry out a coherent body of research that will inform your design. Using a simple template of points to cover, you can easily access the information that will deliver a clear understanding of your site. Now be sure to stick around until the end because I'm going to give you the tools that I use to carry out a successful site analysis every time. The first thing we're going to discuss is mapping, and maps are your best friend at this stage. There are a number of platforms you can use, but it's generally been my experience in Ireland, specifically the West, that Google Maps and Earth are just not that optimal. In Ireland you can access the OSI maps at Geohive, and from here you can view high quality, present day mapping as well as historical mapping from the 1830s and the 1910s. It's so important to understand the historical context of site, and in my own experience, almost all of my concepts have clear links to something historical. In Ireland, most schools of architecture have access to the National Mapping Agreement, a professional version of the OSI maps where you have much higher quality mapping, but you can also save scaled PDFs and use other features to measure your site. Ask your college librarian about login details. Now that maps are covered, let's get into the actual analysis of your site. I like to break this up into four points. History and context, architectural form, urban morphology, and architectural possibilities. Now that's not to say that sun path, wind, and topographical studies aren't important, but these are the points that will help you really understand and engage with your site. Point one, history and context. This is the most interesting because it's usually the easiest one to research. Historic maps will almost always reveal something interesting, be that a particular building, street or square that has since been lost, or perhaps it's still there. Knowing what happened on your site, understanding the memory and how this place used to work and how people used to interact with it can really inspire your future design. You may discover that where there once was a mesh of streets and neighborhoods that enabled circulation through a town has now been destroyed by a new road or commercial building. Understanding these nuances can be a huge benefit and it's up to you to decide what rabbit holes to go down. However, for the sake of presentation, try and pick out one significant event in the timeline that you want to highlight from your analysis. It's important to use online resources such as the National Inventory of Architectural Heritage, the Irish Historic Times Atlas, and even your county library can be full of records and books that aren't online. A really interesting way to analyse your site is to look at existing development proposals and these are usually found on your county council website in the planning section. Every county has a county development plan and usually the major towns have their own separate mini plans within them. These are invaluable sources of information and can also inform your design by showing you what plans have already been proposed and how your site fits into them. They help add a sense of reality to your projects and sometimes these limits can guide your design for the better. They're also a good little source of diagrams and maps that you can trace over. Point two, architectural form. This usually comes in the form of a visual examination of the existing buildings in and around your site. You need to be asking if there are listed buildings and make a record of these. Are there any buildings of unique architectural interest and what makes them so interesting? What's their story? Is there a vernacular architecture that is unique to that place, such as a docklands or quayside aesthetic? Perhaps your site is rural, surrounded by traditional cottages with outhouses. Usually coastal towns offer a bit more range in terms of building styles and shapes because they have been influenced by trade and travel, so be sure to look into these. I don't normally go into too much detail here other than record the existing buildings, their materiality and their scale. Making sketches and photographing roofs and openings can be really helpful as they are commonly used to anchor any new interventions to the site. However, if you feel you should explore something further, then trust your gut because it's in this stage that you're thinking about your own designs in the back of your head. Point three, urban morphology. 
This is a fairly broad term that covers many things, but basically it means the physically tangible characteristics of your site, such as how tall and how many floors are the surrounding buildings, as this will help organise views and natural light. What are the traffic patterns on the streets? Are there any public transport stops nearby? And how far away? As this will help inform your circulation, your public realm and your master planning strategies. Bigger ground maps are great for this as they offer a diagrammatic way of displaying various layers of information by changing the colours and textures in each map. They also look really neat and well organised for presentations. Really, you want to be able to use this along with the historic information to predict a possible future for your site. Perhaps it's headed in a bad direction and your architectural ideas are going to change that. Or perhaps it's headed in a good direction and you want your ideas to build on that and capitalise that for a healthier timescale. These actions towards placemaking and for the good of society are the principles of good design. Point four, architectural possibilities. Here is your chance to record and present your initial sketch ideas based on the research. Architectural possibilities should not just be about how your design looks, but more about how it would benefit the site. This could be anything from improving circulation and permeability through a block, to helping preserve a historically relevant piece of the town's urban fabric. It could also be about a view you want your building to capture, or a river or a park you want to reconnect through your building. The important thing to remember as an undergraduate student is that as you progress from first year, your level of thinking is expected to go into more detail. You need to show that you're not just recording all this information and regurgitating it on a presentation board. You are supposed to actively engage with it, and this is where most students begin to trip up. You need to be shown how you have understood all the information and how you have interpreted it. Your own interpretation of the site is one of your most powerful skills as an architecture student. It's why even though your entire class is working on the same site, that you all end up focusing on different aspects. At the start of this video, I told you to hang around until the end, and here's why. I'm going to give you a definitive checklist to bring with you on your site analysis, so that you don't have to make repeat trips and ensure that you get the correct information every time, the first time. Also, if you follow the links in the description, you will be able to download my free site analysis template folder for Photoshop, so you can spend less time worrying about the composition of your presentation boards and more time preparing for your next studio session. If you find this video helpful, then please like and subscribe. This is a new channel and I hope to release many, many more videos just like this one to help get you through your undergraduate architectural education. And if you have any questions, then drop a comment below and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching. Slam.